So now I'm talking about the second topic I said I was going to talk about because you guys asked me to talk about it. I think the reason why was because of the whole, well, it made it look like it was a social media thing. And you know what the topic is? You guessed it, the Tinder swindler. Once that happened, everybody had an opinion about it. You know, we saw so many messages, oh, it would never happen to me. Oh, you know, um, how could they do this? You know, we saw all those comments. Eh? First of all, people made it seem like, or people thought it was an online issue. So everyone focused on like the idea of Tinder. And most people were like, oh, you know, when you meet a guy online, when you meet people online and online and online. I'm like, it's not an online issue. You know that, right? Because we do meet, you know, you actually meet swindlers offline as well. And I'm going to tell you this story. I think I mentioned this on the platform when it initially happened to someone. So someone told me the story of this girl that they know that got swindled by someone that she met at Ebano. Should I have mentioned the name? I don't know. Okay, so she met at this lucky supermarket. <laughs> so apparently she met the guy there. He was he was wearing like a workout gear. He was like looking all ripped and, you know, sweaty, like he had worked out. You know, in the evening times, most people used to go to the bridge to work out. And so she just felt like maybe he was one of those people. And she met him. He was nice. Apparently they ended up dating for about two months. And then she slowly found out that the things he said were not true. Number one, he told her he was a personal a personal trainer or a fitness instructor or something. And it made sense to her because every time she saw him, he was always like in some fitness gear, sweaty, you know, he was really ripped as well. So it made sense, obviously, you wouldn't doubt that. So after a while, she found out that that was a lie. And he actually was... Um, a, a worker that used to lay bricks at a construction site close by so I guess that explains how he was being ripped why he looks ripped maybe but well that didn't explain why he told her all those lies of course so the point I'm making is not on the tinder swindler or why on the Ebano swindler because you know it's just a name because if it's called the tender swindler in this case you could call it the abandoned swindler people that have met some people on on facebook could call it the same thing or people that met people at weddings you can say the wedding swindler you know so it's just it's wherever you meet the person a swindler is a swindler offline online a swindler a swindler that intends to swindle will swindle <laughs> you know no matter where they meet you so it's not about the location that they meet you. And this is not just me saying it because we're working with online platforms, not trying to not scare you away from online platforms. I'm really telling you a true story that happened. And I'm trying to tell you that be careful online and offline that this happens all the way. Because if you put your emotions and say, oh, it only happens online, I'm going to not go online dating. You know, I'm going to just do everything offline. You might not be as careful as you should be. And this happens offline as well. This lady at Evano did not expect to meet this guy, did not expect him to be a swindler, and that happened. If you meet someone at a wedding too, sometimes you feel like they're pre-filtered for you. Because especially if you know the couple, you're like, hmm, if this person is at this wedding, of course it means that, you know, Dayo and uh, whoever is getting married kind of knows this person. Someone knows this person, right? So I feel like it's already filtered. So I can kind of go with a little bit more trust and you'll be wrong. You would be wrong. I heard a really scary story. I don't want to repeat it, but you would be wrong. You need to filter in most cases. And let me give you one little secret. When something is free, when you have to go somewhere that's free, you need to do a lot of filtering. So like even on the platform, you've seen that I've heard people come and tell me, I met this person on your platform and the girl, all she wants is money. I'm like, oh, hold up, hold up. Where did you meet this person? And they're like, in the comment section. I'm like, no, that's not through the platform. That's through the comment section. That's a free service. That's something that you just, that's through Instagram, actually. That's not even through us. You know, so, and if you meet someone in the basic membership, which is free, I always mention that you need to do a lot of filtering yourself. The other membership levels are paid for, 
because it helps you with the filtering a little. Think of it, if Ebano was like Costco, but in a, Costco is still a little bit, you know, let's say a high, a high at Costco, like you needed membership to get in, but it was really expensive to get in. So random people just don't walk into the store and buy stuff. You would feel like it was a little bit more filtered. Do you understand? So if I went with my friends to a club to go and dance and have fun, a regular club where anybody can just walk in, I would, and I met someone there, I would feel like I needed to do a lot of filtering. But if I went to a private, you know, a members only club, uh, sorry, a members only club, you know, I would feel like the filtering would be less. So, okay, so obviously we have a lot of that in Lagos. We have regular clubs in Lagos and we have member only clubs. So, so hopefully, I know I've said a lot of things here and there, but let me just try and clarify or summarize what I've said all through. So I talked about my opinion on the Tinder Swindler. And the first part I said is that it's not an online issue. It happens online and offline. And I told you about the Ebano lady and what happened to her. And apparently, funny enough, I heard that that guy had done it to a lot more people. That he had done it to a lot more other girls that he had met. And the reason why a lot of people hadn't spoke, didn't speak out about it, but when she did, a lot of people said, oh my God, is this his name? Because I met someone at Ebano that did the same thing. You know, he lied about who he was. Those situations happen. So this is also a swindler that wasn't even online. So that's the first point I wanted to make, that it's not an online issue. You can meet a swindler online or offline. And the second point I wanted to make is that you have to also filter if you're going for something free. So if it's somewhere that you're meeting someone and it was free to go for like a wedding, of course, and an event or even an online platform that's free, of course you have to do a little bit more filtering yourself. So take your time and do the work and filter through. But if it's something that's paid for, you might have to do less filtering because you have a little bit of trust in that aspect. So hopefully I didn't touch on the topic of the Tinder swindler part of, you know, um, my enemies are after me, send me money. I feel like I should just say a little about it because it's itching me like <laughs> okay but seriously though I feel like one thing I'm just gonna just say that part if someone you just met a week ago a month ago six months ago is in dire need of something like oh my god I just had an accident or oh my god this just happened to me and you're the person that they call first I, I feel like in my mind I'm like we have to be really close for you to call me first like because if something happened to me in that way like an accident or anything God forbid I mean, pfft, the Nigerian me will not just see accidents and just not put the God forbid at the end of it God forbid <laughs> so if something happened to me or I needed money for something I would know who I would call their friends and family I would reach out to first and if all failed, and that would be a lot of numbers to fail, if all failed, then I would meet the person I just met three months ago. So it's weird when someone that you just met is asking you for help in a crucial situation because you feel like, don't you have family? Okay, some people might not have good family. Okay, but don't you have friends? Okay, some people might not have good friends. Don't you have any circle? Like, don't you have any, you don't have anybody like literally i'm the person you met a month ago and i'm the person you run to for help i'm just i'll just really be skeptical about that so i think sometimes put yourself in the shoes of the other person before you decide to help it's not a bad thing to help but don't help beyond what would affect you something that's yeah i mean taking out loans i mean you understand what i mean all right so before i go I wanted to mention that if there are topics that you want me to touch on, please let me know because I'm going to be touching on frequently asked questions, topics that we might see along the way that are interesting, or just things that happen a lot. In fact, this is like my main focus actually, things that happen on the platform a lot that I feel like they're not helping people win because there are some things that we do and others do that are not helping us win in the dating um, world, quote unquote. I learn a lot from the platform as well, so I feel like others might learn. So if I see something and I'm like, hmm, this is interesting, I just learned this from this person, I'm gonna share it so in case someone wants to learn as well. 
so hopefully you guys let me know in the comment section how this went i think i've talked for too long too long yeah <laughs>